Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again. I am Trace, this is episode three of five on black holes, and we have with us Dr. Ian O'Neill. How's hey. it going, buddy? Good, good, thanks for having awesome. me on again. We are talking about black holes, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens when we finally spot one, because we're about to, right? It's getting exciting. Okay, if you yeah. wanna listen to this episode and not watch it, you can go over to iTunes, by going to the first link in the description and download an audio version of our entire series all at once. It's pretty awesome. So right now, we've only ever seen evidence of black holes. We've seen evidence in other places. We talked about this a little bit earlier. We have direct observational evidence or no? No, no. Uh, we've got um, indirect evidence in the, you know, the, the gravitational lensing idea, right. um, the flares. Right. Um, accretion disks. Accretion disks, or orbits around, the, around this invisible point in space. Right. It's all indirect, though. So but I want to see one, Ian. I want to see it. Funny you should say that, Trace. Is it? So there's going to be, they're actually developing right now, the Event Horizon Telescope. Now that remember, fancy. remember that name. Okay. Because it's going to be the most profound thing in, I would say, in human history. Wow. It's basically going to be a collection of uh, radio telescopes, which are scattered all over the globe, and they're all going to be joined together. It's basically a big interferometer. Basically, that's, that's a fancy way of saying connected telescopes. Right. And what and, you can and do... Just, I'm going to stop you and say interferometry, in case you don't know, is when you look at the waves, the electromagnetic information coming out of a black hole or a star or whatever. Yeah. You're not looking at a picture of it like with a camera the way we do in visible light, but you're taking all of these different waves... Lap putting them all on top of each other and layering them to get kind of a wider view than just visible light. Well, yeah, and but we are actually going to be able to piece together an image. So yeah. basically, we're actually going to be looking at Sagittarius A star, which is the supermassive black hole in the core of our of our galaxy. And at the moment, no optical observatory on Earth or any observatory, no single observatory, can look at the black hole and go, "Okay, that's a black hole. Look, it looks like a disk." Right. Um, but with a collection of um, of radio telescopes with interferometry, you can actually create a telescope which is as wide as the planet Earth. Like it's as big as our whole planet? Yeah. How do they do that? It's basically going to be um, a distributed um, collection of observatories, like from the from the South Pole to Europe to South America, Central America, and it's um, on North both America. Sides, all the sides of the planet. Yeah, so it's as got, the eventually, planet turns, they can keep pointing those dishes in the same direction and the get hope. the the lens for this uh, event horizon telescope will literally be as big as Earth. It's a virtual telescope. That yeah. is so And that's how it works. Awesome. So if you can have uh, the more telescopes you put in this interferometer, the better definition of the signal you can get. And the wider apart they are, the smaller the object you can spot. Now, even though the, um, uh, the black hole in the center of our galaxy is pretty close on astronomical terms, it's what, uh, 20, 20,000 20, light, light years, years away. So that's the closest big black hole. It's going to be the biggest black hole we can see in our sky. But we still can't resolve it. But now with the um, the, the, the EHT, uh, EHT as, as, it's, as it's called, we're, we're, we're going to be able now, to so. resolve it. And the thing is, this isn't happening in like next decade. This isn't happening like even next year. When this is, is going, going to happen... happen this year. Shut up. It's actually being developed right now. And there's some theories, you know, we've got some uh, mathematical models about what this thing is going to look like using current understanding of physics, but this is the first time we're going to actually see it. So when do I get to see a black hole? They reckon by spring. Spring? Spring. Oh my You're god. Gonna is, see it. I don't even know what to say. This is like crazy, amazing. It's going like, to be amazing. I, oh my god. So... What's it going to look like? Well, that's the thing. So if you imagine <laughs> like uh, the movie Interstellar. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's th that the uses, black hole that most people are familiar with. Yeah, and if that actually know. uses real physics. Or I the mean, movie uh, Black Hole, the Disney movie with the little robots. Oh, I don't remember that. Was yeah, you're right. It was yeah, <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah, that's why wasn't. I forgot it. But it, so Interstellar has that giant black hole. It's a, almost a character in the movie. And it, exactly. It, yeah. In my mind, it looks like like a giant ball with fire around it. And right? a lot and of lensing, disc. yeah, exactly. And and there's a lot more lens flare, obviously. It's a lot sure, more shiny sure, than, sure, sure. than what we're going to see. Yeah. But they've got the basic premise right. And uh, Kip Thorne, um, uh, Caltech uh, physicist, well-known well known for his uh, work in theoretical physics, he was one of the advisors and there. So, you know, he knows stuff. creating new science while making this yeah, movie they because they were thinking papers. about things differently than they had been previously. Exactly. So, really so a cool. lot of thought went into that. I, I wasn't a big fan of the movie for various reasons, but the black hole I was a big fan of. That's cool. But so back to reality. Now, what we're going to probably see, and theory suggests, we're going to see a ring. We're yeah. actually going to see a 
um, the event horizon. So we're going to see the limit of the event horizon where there's going to be some emissions coming from the outside. And because the black hole's spinning, depending on its orientation, we're going to get red shifting and blue shifting. So basically the um, radio... Um, uh, the radio waves being generated are going to be pushed preferentially in our direction or away, depending on the direction of the like, flow. Of like the Doppler effect. So Doppler, like, the same, like, yeah, same like, thing. Like an yeah. ambulance coming at me sounds different than an ambulance going away from exactly. me. The light, light or the energy waves coming out of the black hole are going to look different, whether it's spinning kind of towards us or away from us. Exactly. And red shift means towards us? Towards us. And blue so, shift means away? So really what you're going to see is um, almost, I, I liken it to like an eclipse image when you see the eclipse of like the moon in front yeah. of the sun and you see the sun poking out the side. Well, it's like a, a radio version of that. And we're actually going to see, that's why it's called the Event Horizon Telescope. We're not going to see the black hole singularity because that's deep inside. Right. We're actually going to see the limit of the event horizon. Now, so we're going to see that gray hole, kind of exterior we're going to see the, section. We're going to, yeah, we're going to see the event horizon as wow. as we think it as we think it looks. And the thing is, the theory is so advanced now, and so long as our understanding of general relativity holds, pretty much what we're predicting at the moment is what we're going to see. But it has yet to be proven. And you know, physicists love proof, and they love to see direct images. So we've had all this indirect evidence and all these theories. It doesn't really mean anything until we see an image, and we're going to see this image, and we're going to see um, general relativity at its most extreme. We're going to look into this strong gravity environment, which is going to be exciting. When we actually see this for the first time, when the first images come out, and I think people don't really know that this is even going on, but it's going to be across the front pages of all the newspapers in the world. It's going to be the most profound image probably since the pale blue dot by Voyager. It is going to be that amazing because this is not only proves general relativity it also shows our prowess at observing these extreme objects and by us probing the limits of gravity we could see beyond what we know about physics right now and we could actually see some exotic stuff about space time that we never even thought existed when we do this we're going to be able to see the ergosphere that you were mentioning possibly yeah so we so if you see a flare going off uh, so say if um, um a mass falls into the black hole so say like an asteroid or a planet or something it, there's a flare, wow. and this is well known. We've we've seen flares coming off our bla and central black hole the before. The EHT will be able to see those things. Yeah, absolutely, and we're going to be able to see this flare erupt and decay as it wow. orbits the event horizon. Oh my god! So and then we'll know how fast it's moving as well. Yeah, absolutely, oh and gosh. it's going to act as a tracer around space time. So we're basically going to put this dot right at the edge of a black hole. We're going to watch it degrade and perhaps go through some ripples or do something weird that we can't even explain. There's going to be stuff that we don't understand. But can current physics explain it? Well, we don't know yet. We may have wow. to invent new physics. But then again, it could just reconfirm Einstein's general relativity. That guy's pretty smart, so I feel he like is, he's he is. probably safe, safe ground. But This Sh is happening right now, you guys. Spring. By, by spring, we're going to have a Months. picture of a black hole. Yep. And it's going to be a my surprise. Mind, my if, mind is blown. Uh, but the, <laughs> I'm, I'm always a little bit tentative. It's like, you know, we, we kind of know what it's going to look like. You've got, we've got this theoretical constructions about what it's going to look like. What if it doesn't? What if it yeah. doesn't look like it? Oh, that, that's going to be That that's would be, be almost exciting. more exciting. Yeah. Physicists that's, love surprises. So oh this, that, would be a, that would be a phenomenal surprise. But if you can't wait that long, Interstellar was pretty close. <laughs> yes. So just go look at Interstellar. But in Interstellar also, only I only say this because there are also things like wormholes in Interstellar and these yeah. other kind of strange physics things. So for more on that stuff, come back to Test 2 Plus tomorrow. If you can't wait that long, make sure you watch the episodes from earlier in this series about black holes, about where they're from and what they do. We also uh, are on Twitter. You can come find Ian at Astro Engine. You can come find me at Trace Dominguez. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow when we're talking more about black holes.